The construction of the Hoover Dam from 1931 to 1937 was the government's response to tragedies caused by Colorado River floods and droughts. The dam was an engineering triumph and provided America a means to battle nature's wrath. It tamed the Colorado River, providing water resources and electricity to the American Southwest. Since ancient Egypt, floods have been a villain of civilization. In 1927, four years prior to the Hoover Dam, the Mississippi River flooded and covered three states in water. In the entire flooded region, 50% of all animals, half of all the mules, horses, cattle, hogs, and chickens had drowned. Hundreds of sturdy barns, cotton gyms, warehouses, and farmhouses had been swept away. On the fields, in the forests, in streets and yards, in homes and businesses and barns, the water left a reeking muck. It filled the air with stench. Herbert Hoover's direction of rescue efforts afforded him fame and trust, but the worst of it was the Colorado Basin. Covering seven states and two nations, the Colorado River naturally experiences massive floods and droughts. The Imperial Valley, just north of the Mexican border, was hard hit by these. People in the eastern United States didn't think they wanted to be involved in building a dam here in the West. So they couldn't understand the importance of it. On the Colorado River, how it affected the people. So in Southern California, where all the rich farmland was, they were getting wiped out uh, due to um, rain, heavy rain and snow melt. And, and it would just flood them out. And then they would go through great periods of drought. At the height of the Great Depression, everyone felt the strain of the economy and were itching for fair work. Rails had already been established out west, the war to end all wars had been and gone. Hoping to reinvigorate the economy, Herbert Hoover approved a plan to construct a megalithic structure near Boulder City, Nevada. Hoover had a lot of experience dealing with rivers, being a native of California and having dealt with the Mississippi flood. New advances in electrical transport made remote power plants a reality. Eager and willing to put themselves to work, 21,000 workers from every walk of life would come together and save the Colorado Basin. The Hoover Dam was built by multi, um, a very diverse group. Blacks, Hispanics, Chinese, and people from all walks of life. That's what America is. It was right in the middle of the Depression, so you get, everyone was out of work. And in, you know, unfortunately, with uh, unemployment, it does not discriminate. Everyone was out of work. So they were able to uh, bring everyone together to accomplish this great feat with uh, a great diversity that we didn't have at the time. The, the cost associated with the Hoover Dam itself was $50 million. And that was the largest single contract in American history to that day. That is why they put the power plant in, and that would help them pay back what they were paying. And, and that kind of overcame that. By 1981, I believe, uh, they were able to pay off the loan with interest to the U.S. government. It's one of the few government agencies or government entities that is self-sustaining. And that is the, uh, the maintenance and everything associated with the dam and uh, the tourism all, is all self-sustaining. So it doesn't cost the taxpayers anything. The money allocated for the Hoover Dam was an almost $50 million cash infusion. It's found its way into states, construction companies, and inevitably the workers. The workers were relatively well paid by the standards of the time. On average, they were paid more than doctors. This, in turn, would stimulate the economies of Nevada and Arizona by the workers' spending. Now the government set aside another $20 million for steel, wood, and all the other things that they would need to do. And they influxed money into the economy throughout the states and brought in things. The wood was bought locally. They were able to stimulate the economy by doing that. 
the industrial impact came into play. World War II happened. And so the power that was generated here uh, went straight to Southern California. And we were able to help produce our adversary on war-type machinery. But the biggest triumph is that the wild, deadly power of the Colorado River now falls under the control of the United States. Without the risk of floods and droughts, the Colorado Basin could truly develop. The Imperial Valley of California, now one of the most productive agricultural regions today, could only be that way once the river became so controlled and conquered. After the Hoover Dam, other dams followed shortly after in other states. According to my great-grandmother, even places like Oregon experienced periodic floods until the 1940s when various dams were constructed. In fact, before construction of the Willamette River's harbor wall, floodwaters invaded Portland almost every year. Colorado River became one of the most carefully regulated rivers in the world, rivaling even that of the Nile River. A side product of the Hoover Dam is that it generated electricity and tourism, which repaid the full cost of the dam by 1987. The dam is one of the few government projects that is actually profitable. Tourists at the dam would also likely go to the Las Vegas Strip, further boosting our local economy. Though it is important to mention that the native ecology evolved for the harsh rise and fall of the river. There are many endangered fish species, and some invasive quagga mussels, which are also very damaging to the ecology. So in summary, nature tried to kill humans, and we retaliated by making nature do work for us. Next time you use water, keep in mind that if America hadn't taken action, it would have wiped somebody else off the map. Not so well, however. Since the lake hit its peak in 2000, the level of water in the lake has fallen far enough to expose some of the ghost towns which were once lost under the lake. The reason for this is not only the population explosion in Las Vegas, but also because farmers in California are being provided water at reduced cost, letting them grow water-hungry plants that don't do so well in the desert, thus straining our finite water resources. This situation is somewhat similar to the Aral Sea of Kazakhstan, where the lake was redirected for, to water cotton for the Soviet Union. The lake is now infamous for being an absolute disaster. <laughs>